today because I'm so excited and happy. Episode 538, why are you so happy? I just feel like I'm in, in the best mood for the past few weeks. I think a lot of things are contributing to this. Okay. First of all, how is my Suze? I mean, I can't match that energy. <laughs> to be- Not a lot of people can. I don't expect anyone to. Because really. I feel I, like... I, at most times, can't match this energy. I feel like we're going back into lockdown, you know, Oh, we are. Stuff. I think so. So I'm down about yeah. that. But tell me why you're psyched. Well, I feel like I've... Well, I got a new tattoo. Oh, yeah. Tell me all about it. Suze. This was the, I, I am, I've been like so excited to share this experience with you guys because you know how like I feel like, you know, the universe is always talking to us <laughs> and things always line up at the perfect times. So remember how I went to that yoga, sex and rituals retreat? Yeah. And I never treat myself to anything like that. You know, that's the first time I've ever like spent money on something and said like, <laughs> yep, I'm doing this for me. And like. You yeah, know, you, I'll sign you up for things do. that are like for school, like, you know, but like, I don't do anything that's like for myself, just mm-hmm. for me. I, I, I treated myself to like a little staycation, got a hotel room. It felt so good. I'm like, this is what I should be doing. Things that like f- fill my soul. Mm-hmm. So while I was there, I've been wanting a new tattoo for a long, yes. long, long time. We've been talking about this for a long time. And you time. even told me where on your body and... Stuff yes. That, like, oh, you were good. For the right which I, moment. which is an important thing to remember in this story. Where on the body? So <laughs> okay. I, I always wanted it. Right, well, I won't even tell you. I won't even say it yet. And then you can just we'll we'll see. Okay. Yeah. So then I'm at this. I'm at the yoga retreat, and this the woman who's leading it. She um uh is getting. You know, I follow her on Instagram, and I see that she's getting tattooed. And I check out the guy who's doing it, and this is like. It's not just, you know, most tattoos, you like go into a tattoo shop, you pick what you want, blah, 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 blah. This is not that at all. In fact, I don't know why we're even doing tattoos like that. I mean, that's a totally different kind of art. But what this was, so this is a tattoo ceremony. It's a sacred tattoo. It's done by this artist. Uh, His name's Svetli. He's a Russian guy. And he is, he was born in Russia. He started as an MMA fighter or like a, a like street fighter, you know, and became like a fighter. And then he started training in Muay Thai and then he went to Thailand. And while he was in Thailand, he real, he just kind of started, you know, he always felt very spiritually connected. He studied religion. He's read like the, um, uh, the Quran in like four different translations. He has a, a, a master's degree in psychology and, uh, undergrad in, in religion And he went to Thailand and I don't know how old he was when he did this, but he just felt connected to like the principles and the spirituality and the teachings of Buddhism. And so he devoted himself to really learning, um, about, you know, Buddhism and, and one of the things that really interest him were the tattoos, like the tattoos that they did. Mm-hmm. But that was almost secondary. Like that came kind of after. And he just started um, like mentoring under someone. He, he kept visiting this temple. And, you know, they're, it, they're very, in Thailand, this is very protected information. Like they do not allow foreigners to just mm-hmm. learn this stuff. Yeah. In fact, you're not, you can't even get tattooed in a temple if you're not Thai. Like it's very rare. You have to really like, prove yourself in a way so he just showed up and day after day and was devoted and was you know just had i don't know was meeting the right people and there was this old man who had worked at uh, has this monk who had been doing these hand tattoos for years and he was getting older and somehow word got around that you know this artist the guy that i went to was there looking for or interested in uh, 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 apprenticeship or interested in like, you know, working with somebody. So after a few years, the, the monk like calls him to come to the temple and he says, I'm going to take you under my wing and I'm going to teach you this. And he's like blown away. This is like totally like never happens. And for a long, and you know, the man was getting older. So his hand was kind of shaky. And for a long time, he, Hmm. I think it was like three years or so for a long time, he just was like the hands of this old man. So how, how these, 
Yeah, and so he like worked. He did. He applied the tattoo, and then the um, the monk would do the whole ceremony. And it's v- and it's very spiritual. It's very sacred. It's yeah. all about finding the right symbols that mm-hmm. are representative of what you want to manifest or what you need in your life. Yeah. So he did that for years. And then I can't remember what order it was, if he did this first or if he did this other thing first. Then he went to the Baltic and he lived with essentially like Baltic pagans and like Wiccans, like people who were practicing like witchcraft and magic out there Dark and arts. he studied yes and he studied the symbolism he studied um like the philosophies and just the and it was just really like a you know going back to nature kind of mm-hmm. way of living of how to connect with nature and then he studied at the i mean just all different symbols from all different f- different places in the world um uh, nordic ru- uh, runes and like the um like the nordic symbolism and what he found and you know we, we've talked about this on here so much that there were undeniable similarities and connections and th- how the same symbol in a tribe in Africa was used to represent um boundaries that was the exact same as the symbol in like the Nordic mm-hmm. cultures mm-hmm. to represent that. And he started piecing all of these together and grew this practice, grew this, this like in spiritually connecting himself, became someone who connects to the symbols in life that are just so powerful. And we see this. We see this everywhere. We see it in plants. We see it in, like, it's undeniable. I mean, you cut open a plant and you can see it's like, what do they call it? What's that? um, The one that's, the the spiral. There's a name for it. I can't even remember what it is. But, like, it's like in seashells. It's a math that's, like, universal. Right. It's all the ways that nature and math intersect Mm -hmm. and... That yes. and then religion and meaning yes. and all that stuff. Yes, yes, mm-hmm. I get goosebumps just thinking about it. Yeah, that. So, what he does is he tattoos people with symbols that he creates with a with a a, a whole symbol that he creates specifically for you, and it's almost like he channels. He's like a oh, – it's so interesting because it's so custom and it's almost like he picks on picks up on what it is that your soul needs to feel mm-hmm. – oh, my God, I'm going to cry – to feel like centered and to feel balanced and the things that are special and important to you. And everyone is different, and but there are all these like sacred symbols that are like so amazing. So here's how it goes. Okay, so I go to this, I go, I, I, I see her do this ceremony. Like I see it on Instagram and I'm like, holy fuck, this is exactly what I want. This is the tattoo. This is what I need. Mm-hmm. This is like, I don't, this is everything I've always wanted. This guy has a wait list that's like crazy. Getting into the, see this guy is like tough and he's, he charges a bunch of money. I mean, like not a bunch, but you know, like, a, well, sure. it's, it's yeah. worth what, cause when you find out how many hours this is, yeah, he charges, he charges what, he, what deserves. It, he deserves. Yeah. Holy crap. So she happened to be having a contest of a, a ceremony, like a tattoo ceremony. And she, the person who like it, I don't know how it, it just all lined up so perfect that if I weren't at that retreat, if I didn't wow. talk to her about the tattoos, then I message him and say like, hey, I'm, I, 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 I would love to get a ceremony with you even if I like, don't win this contest, blah, 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 blah. He said he never checks his, his Instagram messages. He never, ever, ever looks at those. He happened to write me back. And then he said he couldn't believe it because not 48 hours later, the woman had, had or somebody else had chosen the winners and he looks at it and he goes, wait a sec. I, I talked to her mm-hmm. and he felt like it was even like 
serendipitous ordained. and yeah. ordained that I mm-hmm. am the one. He's like, this. I never, ever talk to people. Like, this is not how it should be. And he said he couldn't believe it when I won. So it felt like he had that feeling like, oh, you're, you're supposed to be here. You're, like, really ready for this. And I had that feeling like, oh, my God, I'm supposed to be there. And then, okay. So, I go, so it's, like, perfect. And I have a whole entire day to, to do this. I go in, like, and one of the things that they say before... They send you this this list of like this. These are things that you need to do to prep to get ready for the ceremony. You can't, you, no alcohol, no drugs, no um, uh, no like I have no sex, which you know not hard for me when you know nobody's barking up the street. So <laughs> no, so right? I'm like, uh, I'm like that's easy. Check. Well, before she starts crying again, I just wanted to take a minute to talk about Girlfriend Collective. We've talked about them in the past, but this company makes the greatest athleisure products I've ever seen. These This clothing is amazing and it's sustainable. I can't believe the quality. So like you can wear it around the house doing nothing or you can do it, you know, wear it biking, running, swimming, all that stuff. They will make you feel your best. And I'm so impressed with how they use the plastic, bo- old plastic bottles and fishing nets and other waste and make it into gorgeous clothes that clothing like leggings which are squat proof they have pockets and like different levels of support so you can get compression or just comfort and they you can even do like a garment take back situation they have a program called re-girlfriend so once you're done loving your pieces send them back to be upcycled into new gear this stuff is really nice and their models are of all different sizes and shapes so you can see what you really will look like wearing the clothes. For listeners of the show, Girlfriend Collective is offering first-time customers $25 off purchases of $100 or more. When you go to girlfriend.com slash candy, that's $25 off, $100 or more. When you go to girlfriend.com slash candy, girlfriend.com slash candy, that is something you won't regret. So let's get back to Sarah's tattoo adventure. So no sex. I did see this funny meme that said like uh, ferrets, like female ferrets, like will die if they don't have sex within a year. And I was like, <laughs> um, how closely genetically related are we to ferrets? Because uh, I'm a little, a little nervous. <laughs> I know that's not the case. So don't worry. Um, okay. So uh, how it works, I get I, you. So they say, so, and then also having a vegan diet before um, so you're obtaining from like killing anything. I didn't kill any spiders. I killed one mosquito <laughs> and then I, I told him about it and I felt so bad. Oh and God. then he got into this whole conversation with how if something is attacking you, you're allowed to defend yourself. Okay. So you don't need to feel bad about killing the mosquito. <laughs> he was like, that's so sweet, but you're okay. And if it's attacking me and he's like, I'm a fighter, you know, if somebody came and attacked my family, I, you bet your butt, I would be take <laughs> take him out in two seconds and I right. defend myself. So if that mosquito, it's you or, it's you or him. So you can yeah, kill him. Right. Like, oh, thank God. Killer Thank killed. God. Thanks for saying. I needed. I needed to hear that. Um, maybe you saw my mosquito bite on my Instagram story. That was it. I'm like, oh, yeah. I, I'm getting eaten alive, but I can't kill anything. It was horrible. <laughs> um, I was like, does bugs break out? So, um, so I like really took this serious, you know, and I really prepped my body. I I think this is the longest I've gone without alcohol in my life. I have not drank a sip since starting this, and I'm going to keep that up. And I feel the best I've ever felt. Ever, it's amazing. <laughs> That's great. Oh, so, I mean, don't nobody else stop doing what you're doing. But I'm just saying, me personally. Yeah, sure. Um, so I really took this seriously. I really prepped. I felt like the. I meditated every day. I felt the difference in my body, and so I was like, oh, so excited to do this. So, I arrived there. It starts at twelve, and you. The first thing you do is if his house like it's not even it's just like a studio but it's like a house and different little rooms in LA it's like super cute and like hippie and like Thai smells like you know incense and beautiful like velvet furniture all these gorgeous sacred symbols all over the walls and his beautiful 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 artwork and you just feel good he's got a really adorable garden with plants growing everywhere and he's like, can I make us some tea? And he just makes tea with all these like fresh leaves and talks about where they come from and what they do and all this stuff. And it just feels so like ritualistic and special. And then we sit down outside on uh, in the in the garden 
And he just says, tell me about, you know, tell me about you. Tell me about things. And, you know, of course, I just like burst into tears. I'm like, Whoa! you know, <laughs> and talk to him about just so much. Talk to him about how I felt like I've always had to be a strong masculine energy and mm. maybe a lot of times lost a little bit of that female energy in the, it, because like, you know, not having a dad present, I felt like I had to do a lot of things and learn a lot of stuff to be strong. Maybe some of you guys out there listening can connect to that. A feeling like I, okay, I got to like handle things myself and I got to like, yeah, nobody is here to do it except me, <laughs> which is like a good skill to have, but can also, it's very lonely it can feel very lonely. Mm -hmm. So I said, I want to like connect to that more feminine energy and that female side and, and be a more, you know, like, uh, expansive, I think is the word I want to use, like version of myself, not Mm -hmm. like, um, you know, more things than just like the tough person, like also be soft and also be able to ask for help and also be able to let somebody take care of me and nurture me and like not be afraid of that and all things like that. So, um, you know, it just, and I, I shared with him and he cried and I cried and, you know, he was, it was just so beautiful. And that probably lasted about an hour and a half or two hours. And then he, um, he says, okay, I, I, I'm going to go into my studio. You go get lunch, have, you know, take a walk around the neighborhood, go get yourself lunch somewhere. Just take time to just relax so I'm walking around the neighborhood and I'm enjoying this beautiful day and I'm like taking pictures of flowers and I come across this tree and you know me how like I love heart shapes in nature more than anything hmm. and I see this beautiful like knot in a tree that's in this perfect shape of a heart and I take a picture of it and I post it on Instagram saying like love is everywhere just look and blah 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 and then I come back and then is the part the next part you know you come back and I haven't seen the symbol yet. I haven't seen anything. Um, the next step, the next step is doing a, about an hour long meditation with him. So you guys are, we're, you guys, me and him, we're in a quiet room, and we're sitting across from each other. And it's just a guided meditation where you're just going deep into your mind and just um, really like feeling your body in this physical space. It's a lot of the stuff that I do in session with clients. It's a mm-hmm. lot of like mindfulness practice, you know. We just do like quick 10 minute ones um, and really just connecting to your body and this being present in this moment and letting the thoughts just kind of like leave your mind. And we did that for an hour and then he preps and then he invites me back into the studio. And, he, you know, as even before we did the meditation, he was talking and we were talking about, you know, like, I have no idea what it's going to look like. I don't know what color it's going to be. I don't know anything like it. There are only like three colors, but I don't know anything about that. He chooses everything. He chooses, mm-hmm. yes. And then, you know, he said, he was like, you know, is there a place you want it? And I said, well, you know, where I, I, I'm not sure. Where do you think? And, and he said, the whole time you've been talking, you've been putting your hand over your chest. And that is the exact place that, is where you told me. that yeah. we wanted yeah. to get a tattoo. So he's like, I think it should be right there, your sternum. And I said, that is exactly where I wanted it. And that is exactly what I want. He's like, I've been thinking that, that that's where you need it. That's so crazy. So crazy cool. Then the best part, when I, so then I go into the room and it's so ceremony, like there's so much ceremony to everything. So it's, you know, a sound bath before and it's um, a meditation before and then offer it uh, like... Um, putting like your intentions in your mind, like into this offering bowl with some herbs and things like that. And, um, and he's got this, uh, like mantra, like one of those necklaces that has all the little stones on them that are, it's like 108 different stones. And he has that laid out on the bed that that I'm going to be tattooed on in the exact shape of the heart Hmm. that I had just taken a picture of outside. Hmm. Like, not like the perfect heart, but like it looks identical. And I just start crying right there. I was like, oh my God, this is so perfect. I can't even believe it. Look at what, like, I didn't even show him the picture, but I'm like, ah, I can't, I can't even begin to describe this. So then he shows me the image. And I mean, if I wasn't crying, I cried the whole day. Oh and if, if I wasn't crying already, this image is so beautiful. 
And one of the things that stood out that, that, you know, he said he didn't even know, like, as he's drawing it, it's more like, like, you're, you're drawing it, but the information is coming from somewhere else kind of thing. Mm -hmm. There are little hearts intertwined and like woven into this design in a way. And I said, oh my God, look at all those hearts. He goes, yeah, you know, it's weird. I've never drawn hearts on anything. (laughs) And I was like, ah! I have hearts all over my hat, like, and like, and hearts in a natural, like, like na- nature occurring hearts. Remember when I got, I was, I knew I needed to get a divorce was yeah. when I saw a heart in the ground on a path. And it was like, anytime the universe is like, girl, you got to do something. It shows me a heart. And so I have these hearts like interwoven into this design. It is so gorgeous and so beautiful. And then we proceed to do the ceremony. I lay down and it is, you really have to go into another place in your mind because it was seven hours of the hand tap tattoo. Seven hours of, we started at three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. And we didn't end until 10, 10, 30. What? And it was all, you have to really go into another place in your mind because it's, it's, I mean, it, he's got a, he was, he's very good at what he does and he's definitely got a light hand and it didn't hurt nearly as much as like some of the other ones I've had, but a, a hand tap tap. And when you do the hand tap yeah. ones, you have to go over the same places a right. lot. Yeah. So it's like reentering a wound that's already open and it was really intense and Ugh. really, um, like meditative, but one of the most beautiful things I've ever done in my entire life. And then you, when he finishes, you know, he, we clean everything up and take, and he puts, he ends the ceremony with putting these pieces of gold leaf on your chakras, like on your forehead and your throat and your chest and saying a, a prayer for each one. And then you do a sound bath afterwards. And then you like, there's a whole bunch of, um, so much ritual, like the string that mm-hmm. he uses to tie the tools that he tattoos you with is this you know red string that's been blessed and then after you're done he wraps that around your wrist and you wear it it's kind of similar similar to the kabbalah red string Mm -hmm. and it's that same concept and it's tied around he says all the blessings and the whole time he's like he's like there there's you know a mantra like a a chanting music going all that like really like throat singing like like chanting going on and he's chanting the whole time so it was like seven hours of being in a like a meditative trance that was so powerful and crazy like it was powerful i mean i can't even say describe it in any other way than that I did not want to interrupt sarah's um emotional tattoo journey so i just did this separately and added it because Her story is just too good. But I had to tell you guys about the importance of therapy. As you know, Sarah is a therapist. And we love betterhelp.com, which is a way that you can receive professional counseling um, from the comfort of your home or, you know, your tablet or your phone or whatever. It's so convenient. And you can get timely and thoughtful responses and you can schedule weekly video or phone sessions with qualified professional counselors who specialize in whatever it is that you are concerned about, grief or anxiety, relationships, depression, all the stuff that so many people are struggling with right now. And it's such a great option, especially if you feel intimidated by going into an office and dealing with all that jazz. This is such a great option option for you. I want you to start living a happier life today. As a listener, you'll get 10% off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash brain candy. Join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health. Again, that's betterhelp, H-E-L-P.com slash brain candy. And he, and the symbol that I have incorporated, one of the things that he talked about was it, it was, oh, I'm going to cry again. He made the lotus flower, which is a symbol that says you can the lotus grows from the most muddy, dirty waters. And it comes up as this beautiful, bright white flower to say that like, we can go, we can be, you know, born into the muck and we can be living in that, that be in that low place and we can still bloom and blossom into this. And it's really what's needed to make this beautiful flower. Mm. 
and like that that symbol it's like so cool to me so it was so magical and so wonderful and then he you know you end everything he puts the necklace on you ties it everything all up i'm like an emotional mess and i see it and i like cry even more and i just feel it's so weird i look in the mirror and i feel like he said this a thousand times because i was like i feel complete like i feel like this was what was missing Mm. and he's like you were always complete you were always like you know you didn't need that to be complete kind of thing which like just feels so good to hear and then i cannot so then i'm always struck by the fact that you have never joined a cult I truly I know. cannot believe it's so it. funny to talk like that because right. you get it's so emotional surprising. and it's lovely and beautiful, but like <laughs> you would be such a prime candidate, right? He did say that. He, well, he didn't say it during a cult, but he was like, "Wow, you you are so genuine and like right. you are so." This you is really so beautiful. Join he said, a "Fucking church or something." For Pete's he sake. said, "As soon as, as soon as I, he's like, as soon as I open the door, you were like, here's my heart. Here you go, like, <laughs> right." <laughs> Be real. careful with it. <laughs> and that's so true. And as that's why you always end up connected. like getting your heart broken by like yes. know, people on the show or boys <gasps> that are stupid. Because yeah. you are so giving with yourself. It's really nice. Oh. Well, thanks, Suze. And so he connect. Well, one of the things that he put in this symbol was boundaries around my heart for that reason. Okay, good. Thank heaven. He put that. He said there's, there's, he put this symbol for this, um, like, just it, like expansive kindness like like this kindness that knows no bounds and he put boundaries around that kindness of like i think that's really good <laughs> it's <laughs> crucial <laughs> it's like that's what i told him i needed i said i it's i told him like a lot of things that we talk about on here that you know mm-hmm. one of my problems is that i am too trusting and caring and and yeah. you know you're always like no no you need to be a little more of like like just a little be, like yeah yeah and so that's exactly what like he saw and what he put in there and what he connected to so it is just like the and so to end it all you know um he said for 66 days keep these things going oh okay and so i am keeping it keeping all that going for 66 days and so far so good and it feels like you know, I love me a glass of wine every now and then, but man, I have never felt better not yeah, drinking. Yeah, it's nice to take I breaks. I love it. Mm-hmm. And I have, I mean, I like lost so, like lost a bunch of weight for like, doing absolutely nothing and like still eating like all the stuff I want to eat and well, I mean, vegan stuff, but I, I can't believe like my body's never, I feel so energetic. I feel so like, you know, I, did, I, I, I think just being in a relationship with somebody who was in the wine business too, like it just normalized it being like just there all the time. And I haven't really experienced what my body feels like in a, in a very um, organic state, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know? And I think a lot of times when I feel like, n- like w- any person, you know, when we feel discomfort or when we feel like, oh, like, oh, I don't like how I feel right now. Sometimes we think that the things that we've been doing, we should just do more of. Like, oh, I'm not feeling great. I'll have a glass of wine. You know, I'm yeah. not I'm feeling so great. Oh, let me go smoke a joint. Whatevs, you know? When really it's like, those are the things maybe making you not feel so great. Yes. And it's so, like Homer you know, Simpson. It's a cause and cure for all of your problems. Alcohol. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's how people yeah. think, kind of. Yeah. Right. For sure. And so, you know, and I'm, this is like to each his own, of course. And sure. I no like no judgment. Again, I'm like, I'm definitely like going to have a glass of wine someday soon. But, you know, it just to, to kind of see what that feels like without. And, you know, I just I, I feel like a reset in, in my like life and everything. So it, and he said that the keeping up this like really activates that symbol and the symbol that's there like it holds so much power and i can feel it and even if it's just you know when we wear like a necklace with a stone that means something to us or you know we have like you know so maybe somebody has a picture of their kid in their wallet and that like every time they look at that it it's the same thing it's just something to put your mind in the right place and so now i feel like anytime i put my hand on my chest anytime i like feel like out of sorts i just kind of imagine the symbol that's on my own body and it's like my spirit goes <sighs> mm-hmm. 
and it feels so good. So it was the most sacred, beautiful thing I've like ever done in my whole life. I'm only, I mean, if I ever get another tattoo, this is the only way I would ever do it. Hmm. It feels like so amazing and, and beautiful. Ah, uh, so shout out to you're my gonna have to show artist. us a it's picture. Awesome. Yeah, you know, I was thinking about that. I was thinking about, like, is this something that I wanted to just keep for myself? Mm -hmm. Or is this something that I wanted to share? Maybe I'll show, like, parts of it, like, where it is. Or Did you you have to take your top off for this procedure? I did. Well, because he he offered, like, there were pasties available. But I was like, fuck it, I don't even care. You know, and Mm -hmm. I wanted it to be, like, centered. And I wanted to, like, because I put pasties on first. Oh, and here's another one. I had put, so the whole time we were talking and he was like, you know, okay, so you're going to have to like, and he was so respectful. He was so like, he was like, okay. What if he wasn't? What if he was a total perv in the end? It was, right. (laughs) Really ruin it. He was, it would really ruin it, right? (laughs) No, he was like the opposite of that. Like I I kept on telling him, I'm like, it's okay. You can put your hands wherever you need to. I'm giving you full permission. But he was so kind about it. I think because he also knew my background. I told him that. Mm -hmm. You know, he was really, really kind. And I, um, when I was in there and he was talking, he was like, okay, so you're going to have to like take your bra off and, and you know, this whole thing because of where it is. I'm like, uh, yeah, I know. And then when I went to go take my bra off, I was like, God, I've been wanting to take this off since I walked in here. He's like, well, why didn't you, why are you wearing that in the first place? Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, and I told him about, you know, some ex of mine who said I couldn't show my nipples or had a problem with that. And he gave me a whole yeah. lecture Good. on why that's a bunch of bullshit. And he was like, no, we're not doing that. He goes, in fact, you don't need to, no, go. And then I went to go, because I was like going to lunch, and I went to go put my bra back on. He was like, what are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, well, I don't know. He's like, who cares? Like, you, you're fine. Yeah. And like, you, you can't see anything. And I had pasties on too. And he was like, what? Like, why are you doing that? He's like, you just got finished telling me how uncomfortable it is and how much you don't want to wear that. Why are you putting it back on? And I was like, you are so right. I'm conditioned because of, I hear the voice of, you know, my ex sure, in my head and saying that. Do, yeah. So, right? Mm-hmm. So we, it's just like one of those things where we just like take a step back and go, am I living for me or am I living for other people? Yeah. And the idea of like what other people want. And so I just had like the best lesson in that. And I feel like I am like, riding the high of that whole experience and that was a very long story for why i'm in such a good mood well i'm so glad i'll tell you i'm riding the high though of how clean my teeth are thanks to quip Mm. Mm. oh Suze. yeah (laughs) i am so in love with that mouthwash i told you it's awesome like and you know uh, you everybody has to try it this is how mouthwash should all the other mouthwash is crap by right. the way, like the other stuff out there, don't do, don't, no, it's full of crap that's like not good and just like dies and everything. I can see it. Mm-hmm. And I love how I have like what feels like a million years supply in that teeny tiny thing that, cause it's concentrated and you just add water and it's so fun. It feels like doing science and brushing my teeth. <laughs> yeah. Their mouthwash is four times concentrated. So it comes in an eco-friendly refillable bottle, which is also 100% recyclables. You know how they ship <sighs> normally those big bulky bottles it's oh, so bad for yeah. the earth, and this is so much better. And, I mean, all of their products are amazing. Their toothbrushes, their toothpaste, the floss, you can also refill that. It's just a really great company, and it's sustainable, which I love. Um, and the toothbrushes are cute, and they send you a new yes. head every three months. So they are fantastic in every way. Mm. If you way. go to getquip.com slash brain5, that's a new code, Brain5. Right Ooh. now, you can get $5 off a mouthwash starter kit. That's $5 yes. off a mouthwash starter kit, which includes a refillable dispenser and a 90-dose supply of Quip's four times concentrated formula at getquip.com slash brain5, spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash brain5. Quip is the good habits company. Yes. Other um, thing that I'm thinking, I'm going on a backpacking trip soon. Yes. Where I have to, like, you know, I still want to keep up my, del- I was going to say delicious. I was thinking about the mouthwash. My good <laughs> oral hygiene. Yes, It's please. so perfect to put it in a teeny tiny little jar and it's yeah. already concentrated. Right. This is like the ideal camp. I could camp with it and I could spit it out and I won't worry about it going into the plants. And you will be fresh as a daisy. Fresh as the daisies that I'm on the fields I'm walking through. Oh, so magical. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yes. <laughs> so that's my tattoo story. And I just like am so happy to share it with you guys. And I feel like you listeners who have, have kind of like been with me for these 500, been with us for these, you know, 530 Seven, eight, eight episodes? yeah, mm-hmm. thirty-eight episodes. You know, have heard kind of these. It, it's it was so, it was so nice. You know, while uh, I don't know where what we were doing, if it was like a book club or something, where people were talking about like seeing me kind of go from the person I was when I was <laughs> I with know. my ex-husband. <laughs> yeah. To oh yeah, because they were asking now. me about my opinions about all that in documentary yeah. club, right? Ah, uh, yes, yes, mm-hmm. and it's just you know, it feels like. I hope that that it encourages other people to like do things that make them feel good and live for themselves and really f- like love yourself. I think mm-hmm. that is the most important thing is learning to like really fall in love with who you are and in your most and I feel like the 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 more I'm myself, the more people have responded to it in a positive way than yeah. when I was being something I wasn't. So mm-hmm. like I just want everybody to just be That's so true, are. Sarah. I, yeah. I I agree with you. I notice how people interact with you now, and then if I think about how they used to, it is different. It's different. I feel like I've I've in in learning to really like in loving myself more and connecting to like and not being a, a not being shy about or like embarrassed about the parts of me like. You know, yeah, I'm loud and yeah, I'm like goofy and yeah, like, you know, I fall down sometimes and yeah, like whatever it is, like, and I say silly things, whatevs, like who cares? And the more I've just embraced and loved those parts of me, I have met and connected with people who feel like that about themselves and it is made for some of the most amazing and beautiful friendships. Yeah. I'm connecting with people who are brain candy brainiacs who like reach, now I'm like, oh. You know, I have to find, I can't remember what her name is, but there's one gal who, um, we, she's, she and I started following each other on TikTok and now I go, and she's so spiritual and wonderful and is like supporting me in my new vegan lifestyle. And like, um, <laughs> it's, she's so cute. And, uh, and I like pop into her lives cause she does like live, like tarot reading and stuff on, on TikTok every now and then and like things like that. And like, and I feel like I'm like creating a little like friendship and connection with other people who are in the same space. And I just, that is really really cool to do like when you connect with people who who vibrate at your same frequency Mm -hmm. oh it's the whole point yeah forward motion too it inspires movement so i just love that this is so different this this topic is so so different than some of the other things that i have on my list to talk to you about today you would not even believe it okay so this is weird and falls into like those i don't know like bizarre oddity stories from the past from from <laughs> so i what get a message mean? i'll tell you you're gonna find out I, I i get a message from my friend sarah shout out to sarah who's like uh have you ever heard of the nub club and i was like what are you saying and she's like no no you need to look this up you need to look up this documentary i think the documentary was called nub city oh god and it was done. I don't in, love I the word like, nub. Me either. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's not a, I don't like the word. Like I, I have, and as somebody who's dated, uh, somebody who, uh, was an amputee or had a limb amputated, I have no problem with that. That is not, it's not the actual. No, it's the word. It's the word. That's just <laughs> like, just to word. be very, very clear. Cause I don't want anybody to get my words twisted. Um, so, Okay. There is a town in. Uh, oh wait! First of all, let me g- guess what state this is in. <laughs> Florida. Yes, correct. <laughs> so there's a town called Vernon, Florida, where a significant percentage of the population are amputees. Okay. Have missing limbs. Are they veterans so or they are not veterans? So it okay. started in about the 1950s. And nobody really knows how, like, who the first person was that this happened to. But, what do you mean this? Well, uh, oh, hang on. Okay, okay, so, okay. So the town fell on hard times when, like, there, I, I think there was something about, like, a steamboat industry that, like, dried up there or, like, and okay. then there was a railroad that was put through town that, like, made it so nobody pat- nobody really stopped in this town anymore. So it became, like, a town where people 
I mean, they like just, time stood still kind of. Yes. Time mm-hmm. stood still. And then they really fell on like economic hardships because yeah. they had like um, severe unemployment rates and the under, yeah, unemployment rates shot up. Businesses went down. And so I don't know if somebody did this intentionally and there's still, there's a lot of mystery around it. Nobody knows like what the first accident was, but one of the residents shot off their hand or somehow lost their hand in an accident i hate that you say the first accident yes like that's a foreboding okay. I, I put it into quotes <laughs> a- accident a definitely air quoting accident by the way okay so this guy loses his hand makes an insurance claim makes like a you know like a hey lost my hand insurance claim <laughs> Gets five thousand dollars, which at the time was equivalent to fifty three thousand dollars. Okay, right. Uh-huh. That's like a lot of money. Yeah. So I don't know. Word spread that this was something that you could do, and you mean like insurance pays that? Or yes. What? Okay. Yes. It caught on, and like it, the, the the purposeful amputation or no. intentional amputation of limbs no. became. It spread like wildfire throughout this town. What? People started like just amputating limbs or like having these quote unquote accidents where like story after story after story of people who, oh, I was farming. I was, you know, working on my tractor and somehow I lost my arm. I worked. No. The the reporters went down. This this New York Times article was written by a guy named Joe Healy in 1972 because he like word got around that this is like how things were done there. And, you know, and they were kind of like cut off. So not a lot of people you know, really knew about this. He goes there and out of, right? Out of, oh my God, I didn't even mean to say that. Stop it. That was an accident, but that is so funny. Um, So like out of 700 residents, about 50 of them at the least had severed limbs. Okay. What? And he said, walking through the town was one of the most eerie things that you could do because you looked around and people would just be, you know, it's odd to see people who yes, are amputees and to odd. know that they intentionally did it, that they're, you know, and they, they, he did research on their oh, mental Lord. health conditions yeah. and, this was, I, and it was, it was determined that this was not part of an identity disorder. God. Okay. I have a lot of questions. I Let- know. I have a question for you. Would you ever? <laughs> <laughs> well, right. That's what I was thinking about that sort of hyperbolic phrase when people are like, I'd cut off my arm to go to Disney World yep. or something. Right. I mean, right? this is actually what they're doing. Correct. No, I would never. Yeah. Okay. So when I, well, and also let me say that, that the the pri- the payouts for this i don't know if this somehow changes things it doesn't but <laughs> the payouts at the time were between 50,000 or 500 uh 5 no 5,000 and 300,000 which today which like you know oh, wow. taking into account for inflation would be 53,000 to 3.2 million dollars i mean i might do a finger for that right or a toe who needs the pinky Okay, before I get to my questions, let me um, just say that a nice break that you could take that doesn't involve amputation (laughs) would be playing Best Fiends. Oh, I love it so much. That's a way to relax. You know what? While you were at my house, we should have played like side by side. I know. (laughs) Um, Well, do you know what level you're on now? Ooh, I want to say it's in the 600s or 700s. Oh my God. Okay. Yeah. So you're just, yeah. keep, you're, you, there's no end in sight for you. No, oh, no. No. Why would there be? It just keeps going and then I just get to evolve my friends. There's nothing I love more than when it says, are you ready to evolve this friend? And then you click it and then he evolves and then it yeah. becomes like a more adorable version of what it used to be with like little glasses or something. Oh, you guys <laughs> just have to download it so you know what I'm talking about. And then if you do have it already, you are, you're smiling right now because you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Well, it's a really fun game. There's thousands of puzzles to solve. There's something new every day and plenty more to go. I mean, you can just keep collecting those characters and having fun. And it's a nice break from this crazy world we live in. Download the five-star rated puzzle game Best Fiends free today on the App Store or Google Play. That's friends without the R, Best Fiends. And great yes. for travel. You don't even need internet. So great. Yes. yes. 
Yeah. All right. So I used to play this game with myself in my own mind uh, when I was little. Uh, I really, really, really wanted a vintage car when I was like 15, like before, maybe even younger than that, like 13 to, to 16. I was like, I want a 1957 Chevy Bel Air. I wanted that so bad. I like even when I got my license, I even went and looked at at like I got the vintage, like the old like classic car Auto Trader. Remember the Auto Trader? Yes. And I would go through the Auto Trader and I would go, I would go like visit these vintage cars and test drive them, and like really had it in my mind like I am getting a classic car, and as my first car, which I could afford like a shitty one, which was like a terrible idea. I mean, I ended up getting a. It's still kind of a vintage car, but you know, anyways, that's another story. Um, but I used to play this game in my own mind when I would go to bed at night and dream about the car that I'd want to get. And I would say, what toe would you be willing to cut off for this car? <laughs> I was like, where is she going with this? Yeah. I would play this and then I would like go up. I would like up the ante and yeah, like, yeah, I'd yeah. Be like, I like, okay, that. okay. So like, oh, would you do it would for a pinky? Do it? Definitely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I was like, I would have to think like, okay, like pinky, do we need that for balance? Like, okay, but I can do a thumb. That would be, you know, I was like, I wouldn't mind. I really spent a lot of time thinking about which fingers or toes I'd be willing to sacrifice for a car. Yeah. And I, in my, and even in my little kid. And nothing came from it. Even in my <laughs> little kid my mind, toes. I had this, right, and I have all my finger toes. Even in my little kid mind, I think I was able to be like, there's nobody who's taking this bet. Or like, nobody who's like, yeah, yeah I'll train you. Out. Right, well, paying out for this. I'm not clear. But then I didn't know about this. I don't understand what you even mean, though, about this payout. Because I thought I guess that insurance, insurance just pays for, you know, like, medical bills. Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, they don't, but they, maybe it's accident, like an accident Mm -hmm. insurance or something like that. Because it did say in the article that there were some people who were, who had even purchased life insurance like the day before. Right. Okay. I want to know who the really shitty insurance agent (laughs) who was clearly either getting cutbacks or whatever you call it, kickbacks or whatever that name, that word is, you know? Right. I mean... That makes me sad because clearly these folks just were on hard times and needed some cash. Right. I wonder like what they would say was the best limb or digit to remove. Yeah. That's a good, you know, I think most of them went with the hand and with the gun. A lot of, there were a lot of gun, uh, like gun. They would shoot their hand? Yes. (laughs) Like, or somebody else would. And then they would say, like, oh, I shot it off cleaning my gun. Come on. Yeah. And also, that's like a fast, what are you going to do? Like, I, it, I mean, you can say oh, I was in a tractor accident, but I'm, I don't want to stick my hand. Oh, my God. The idea <laughs> of that is just so freaking crazy to me. Wait, this <laughs> isn't like, 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 we're not going in, like, nobody, nobody's giving you lidocaine or whatever what they call that. Yeah, the, right. The, 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 nobody's numbing you. You're, yeah. You're like, <sighs> No numb for the nub. Wait, would you re- see? Because to me, if I had to choose between hand or foot, I would choose foot. Why? Because like I like sitting, and oh my god, like, so I funny. type with, with my hands, and I cook with my hands and stuff. You know, oh, like, I'm I such more. a lefty that I think I could just tie my right hand behind my back and I'd be fine. You can just take it off. I used to say that. It'd be like, yeah, you cut the right arm off. I'm fine. You know wow. what? I made a lot of references to cutting off limbs. So say, uh, yeah. Yeah. This is clearly of interest to you. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you would rather do hand things. than foot. Yes. Oh, this is a great... This is a poll. <laughs> it's a poll. Would you rather hand lose a hand or lose a foot? And we're not even saying lose. Like, you're, you're voluntarily giving up a hand or a foot. Do you think that usually they employed the help of a friend in this process or was it for sure i'm sure oh, wow. well okay see and also why i say hand over foot is because <laughs> uh, this is, everything <laughs> is funny <laughs> yeah <laughs> because jordan was my partner on the challenge and he has doesn't have i mean a hand i can't remember what the name the umbilical cord was wrapped around his wrist when he was in the womb and so his <laughs> hand didn't develop yeah. and we fucking crushed it. We won the whole thing. It never slowed us down. In fact, the only time it came, was a problem was when he had to do a challenge where he had to unscrew this like 
ball from a, a basically like you needed five fingers to do it. That was the mm-hmm. only thing he couldn't do. The guy was a professional wakeboarder and he yeah. had one hand. But I but mean, he, that didn't slow him down at all. I would say he has like one and a half hands though. Okay, that's that. You know yeah. what I mean? I think that half yeah. really makes a big difference. I wonder, uh, yeah. I okay. would rather just do the finger rather than a whole hand for sure. Yeah, and I wonder if, like, the more you do, the more it goes up in money. Right, that's I feel what like I this think. conversation is definitely going to offend people. But you know Wait, what? Wait, why, though? I was thinking I have that, no too, idea. but then I couldn't I think know, of why. I know, but I can't, I can't think of why either. Because it's, I, I, I can't think of why. But well, maybe, to- like, the idea that some people are voluntarily doing something that other people have to... <sighs> yeah, but they should be mad at the nub club, not us for right. talking about it. right. Okay, I just wanted to feel like it's but weird you're that we right. have that feeling. Right. I'm like, mm. So, I mean, I got a letter from my own mother saying that <laughs> a long lost relative that she found on fucking 23andMe, who's like a minister, not our target audience, thank you. Like a, 50, like a 65 year old like minister from like, I don't know, wherever, was offended. When yeah. we talk, no, heartbroken was the heartbroken. word he used. Heartbroken. Oh, for fuck's sake. When, he, when we talked about short people, short yeah. guy, how Susie didn't like short guys. That's Clearly he didn't listen because I followed that right up with, I like short guys. They work harder and like, it's no problem to me and I don't even care. <laughs> they work <laughs> harder. I mean, I didn't say that, but they do. <laughs> well, oh my God. Well, that was the good baffling stuff, you know to about. me because... I wasn't saying I don't like them as people. I was just saying right. that I don't prefer to date them and that that's just I'm attracted to tall men. And so the fact that he's heartbroken, it's like, dude, I wouldn't have dated you for other reasons. <laughs> right. Ah, your height is the least. <laughs> right. uh, uh, like that's like the, the least amount. We have the least amount of a problem with that. Yeah. Yes. That's the thing I take. He, no, and no he said with. he felt discriminated against discriminated i'm sorry but Come attraction is, is what it you it's not about discrimination it's just like if you are attracted to a person or not yeah that is okay so like there's a thousand things wrong with that with it like i just can't with that well so what you're saying really is definitely people will be offended by this if someone's offended <laughs> by that <laughs> yeah gosh that's so funny i'm like i apologize uh, for my long lost relatives and their feelings about Ugh, it's just weird to me. Anyways. Well, and your and your mom was like, "Oh, you know, they're just trying to make comedy." I wasn't. I wasn't trying to make comedy. That is a true no, story. I, your I'm attracted your to feeling. tall men, and your attraction to whomever should not offend <laughs> no. or or make somebody heartbroken. I mean, man, maybe he really had a thing for you. <laughs> right. Clearly, really this guy had feelings. Sensitive. Yeah. Yeah. He got Golly. very invested in that 20 Jeez. minutes listening session he did. Yeah, so dumb. And like, uh, I don't know. I feel like what I it, it makes me think that maybe there was some stuff earlier in the episode that a elderly <laughs> minister from wherever <laughs> what like as waspy as they come could be offended by. Right. There's like 5,000 things you could say. Like he That's, just was like didn't yeah, page the one that maybe point, was most personal. Cuz it's like what else was in that episode? Because that couldn't have been the most offensive part. <laughs> right. I'm like, has he heard any other episodes? Clearly not. Because that is, that is like the least offensive thing that we say. Right. Oh, my God. Well, That's I just funny. feel like just if you me. don't like the show, it's not for you. That's okay. Right. If it ain't your cup of tea, don't drink it. Yes. We yes. made that merch. It just drives me crazy when people are like, oh. And I'm like, we know. Go to our, go check out the store. We know this so well, we've made it into merch. Oh, it just makes me laugh. So I, I had to share everyone. that story about that. I, all the time, right? Well, is this nub thing still going on? No, I don't think so. This was like old timey weirdness. Yeah, but people are still in the town, st- are still, you know, missing limbs. Because, <laughs> you know, Cause you're saying they don't grow it back. Was, it was recent enough that they still live there. Yes, yes. How 1972, strange. so they're older, but or maybe. Gosh. I wonder if they still feel good about that decision. I think with $3.2 million in your pocket, if I was going to willingly like let go of a thumb for a Chevy Bel Air, <laughs> I'd feel pretty good with it. I'd feel okay. Really? I, I, I'd, I'd rest easy on my 
well, I don't know. I'm also like, no, like, what is my, yes, know, who that's cares about money anyway? That's, yeah. I'm like, what, who cares? Like, that's not the important stuff. I've been thinking about that more and more lately. Yeah, me too. Like, the idea that I have, that my ex-husband bought me a pair of shoes that cost the price that they cost is the fucking stupidest thing I've ever th- thought of. Right. Like, I can't get over it. I can't. I'm well, because like, there's so many things wrong with it. <laughs> there's so many things wrong. And I think <laughs> Jeff Bezos going to fucking space Here really go. just, like, <laughs> brought everything yeah, up in me I about I see this. what you mean. Yes, I agree with you. That did m- plant a seed for me, too, about really? Like, and you <sighs> still want more and it's not enough. I feel like it's they they should diagnose they should the DSM manual thingy needs to add yes. something for when you need more money even when you have almost an infinite amount. Yeah, this that there there should be. You know what? That's a really really good cuz that's point. pathological. That is not It absolutely healthy. is. It's saying like that you I mean it would be the same thing if you it's like hoarding in a way. Yes. It's financial hoarding. Fuck it. A. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Asterisk. Yes. Uh, write it down. That's an idea. Okay, I'm going to Google that. Has anybody – is this an idea that people are already onto? F- I mean, people do talk about hoarding. how rich people are like that. But uh, to me, there's a difference between wealth or being rich and yeah. having like more money than you could spend in your life. Right. Reasonably. Yeah. It's, okay. And I think part of the reason people aren't more upset is because the human mind has trouble conceiving of even how much he has. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I heard this. This um, Actually, my friend Sarah, the same one who told me about the Nup Club, told me about this. She's full of information. <laughs> it's fantastic. And uh, also she microbladed my eyebrows and she's like, uh, oh. does like, cosmetology stuff. She's fucking amazing. It's wow, so goodness. great and I love her to death. <gasps> she's so good. Okay. Shout out to Sarah again. Um, keep, keep in mind, we do have to wind it down momentarily. Oh so God. you might want to... Oh, <laughs> Uh, oh, we have to wind it down. What was I? Now I got. Now I got distracted. Sorry, I didn't what was mean I, to. What was she saying? She told um, me a story about. Damn! Oh my God! I ruined everything. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Financial okay, yeah, yeah. The, the, the financial thing. If you were to stack up, uh, uh, if you a million dollars in, I believe it's one dollar bills. Mm-hmm. It would be. I think it's one dollar bills, not a hundred dollar bills. I, I'm I'm pretty sure it's it would be three feet high. If you were to stack up a billion dollars, it would be as high as the Empire State Building. Right. That's the comparison of between a million and a billion. Like, we can't even, like, we think, oh, yeah, a billion's right after a million. No, it fucking isn't. Yeah. It's way farther away. Like, and he's got multiple Empire State Buildings of money. Hundreds. Fuck you. Fuck you, dude. I can't, I hate, it's so selfish. When you can freaking get like starvation on in an entire country like feed an entire country and you're i can't what i can't i can't i can't i can't i have to call i have to wind it down yeah the, i knew it that was the, what i was afraid of. <laughs> i need to take deep breaths we have learned <sighs> so much on this episode though sarah took us on her new tattoo journey yeah I told you all about that. We talked about, you know, people voluntarily cutting off limbs. You got to hear about, you know, what what fingers and toes I would amputate in my dream car <laughs> this, situation. It's, it's good, though, that you probably wouldn't cut off a digit, though, because no. of your proclivity for maybe cults. So, right. like, I feel like that would be a bad combination. That would be very that, – not that. We're not like, yes, I should definitely – yeah. And And – should I stay away from colds or join one? Jury's still out. Be sure to, um, if you see a heart in nature, you uh, should tag Sarah. And yes. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Tag me in all the heart pictures that you see in nature. It is the greatest. And, and I will share them with you and all the beautiful hearts that are everywhere. Just mm-hmm. look. It's so cool. Don't forget to subscribe and check out our merch and our Patreon.com slash Brain Candy. And we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.